Yo, guys, how how is everybody doing? Welcome in, Rover Sports. We're going to do the NFL Week 6 edition uh, show. And this is going to be a podcast, and we're going to talk about all of the uh, major storylines here, about a half an hour worth of content. I uh, hope you guys will enjoy it. We'll also clip out a lot of the content, so team-specific stuff will all come out of this episode just digested um, a lot of games, D- just digested a lot of football games, and I wanted to take the time now to uh, to discuss some of these games here. So first game I'm going to start off with is I'm going to start off with the Denver Broncos. They go into New England today, and they find a way to beat the New England Patriots. They make Cam Newton throw two interceptions. They also had a, a sack fumble. I think they might have had three turnovers in the game. And then you look at you know Cam Newton also diving on a fumble. So the defense, I mean, everybody was stepping up today. They had a guy come in, a free agent who was you know making tons of plays on defense. A lot of guys, like I know I saw Chubb out there, Josie Jewell from Iowa, I got to get more familiar with the Broncos roster on the defensive side of the ball, but they came out and they were stifling today. They were unbelievable, and the Broncos offense, I'll tell you this, the Broncos should have won the game. The Broncos should have won the game by about 20 points, and they got inside the 10-yard line, I believe like two or three times. They kept getting in the red zone. And, you know, today you're going to look at Drew Locke. You're going to see the if you if you look at the box score of Drew Locke, you'll see the two interceptions. But I went back and watched the game and Drew Locke was actually really, really exciting to watch today. And I just loved the aggressiveness, actually, of Shermer and Drew Locke. I mean, it might have just been Drew Locke because there were no screen passes. He was airing it out against New England. This is a team that really played to win today. And New England made a couple of really good plays on the ball in man coverage, but they manned up Drew Locke, forced him to beat them, and Drew Locke was able to hit Alberto down the field. Alberto had a phenomenal game. Jerry Judy made a couple of plays. He had that great crossing route, but Drew Locke, third and 21 from his own 20-yard line, hit Tim Patrick up the sideline. They got that kid Spencer involved on an end around. Phillip Lindsay ran it really well. And this is a Bill Belichick defense. So when Denver gets home to play Kansas City, this is an offense that's on the verge of explosion. With, with the defense today coming to play, going to New England and finding a way to win, coming up with that huge, huge stop on fourth down when uh, New England was driving, getting after Cam Newton. I mean, if the Bills go out there and beat the Chiefs, the Broncos Broncos next week against Kansas City at two and three after this bye, um, or I guess it's a bye. I'm not sure if their game got postponed because of the coronavirus, but I mean, Denver coming in here, they still have a shot at this thing. Only playing five games, Drew Locke now is healthy, and and the fact that you got Drew Locke and... Again, like the injuries seem to help the guy. I mean, the guy now is is really starting to play like solid, solid uh, football uh, for the Denver Broncos, and he he was he was taking shots down the field against single coverage. He's giving his guys opportunities, and wide receivers want to play with a quarterback like Drew Locke. He made really several, several really impressive throws. The one up the sideline was an interception down the stretch. I'm just happy for the defense, though, that they got locked that win because people would look at that throw to Tim Patrick as not closing out the game. But again, Vic Fangio dialing up the blitz, keeping all of his timeouts. Uh, The Patriots and Josh McDaniels ran all of the trick plays uh, trying to get to Denver, and Denver every time was an incredible position. You got to give Vic Fangio his props, and I got to give Shermer props as well. The offensive game plan today with Philip Lindsay and Drew Locke played a phenomenal game. We're going to go watch the tape of Drew Locke this week. Um, we might not even need coaches' film because it's a mentality. It's a it's a uh, it, it, it's a necton mentality. 
which means like always hungry, never full. Drew Locke was trying to throw five touchdowns, and ironically, he didn't get like any touchdowns. But that ball was in the end zone all day, and Denver guys had had chances to get it. Like the, I think Albert O actually had a chance at a touchdown. Same with the tight end. Drew Locke was putting the ball up there where his guys could get it. New England's unbelievable in coverage. Like they're playing man to man. Jerry Judy's going against you know the best of the best. And I know that New England had the virus and they weren't sharp today. It doesn't matter. I mean, Denver has like the same sort of thing going on. And they went into New England, and this is a huge win for Drew Locke to go to that stadium and beat that head coach and for Vic Fangio to win this game. Vic Fangio needed this. The team can't go to, what is it, one and four? You just can't. So so now they're two and three. Um, they, they played a disastrous game against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. The Steelers game happened. Uh, Tennessee's a very good team. And now Drew Locke is back, and this team, like, if Drew Locke can stay healthy, now you actually have a game to watch next week if you're a Denver Bronco fan. You got Oakland and, and Kansas City in this division, and now with your quarterback, now with your franchise there, you got Jerry Judy, you got Hamilton, who dropped a perfect ball from Drew Locke, but this offense, you know, Pat Shermer called very conservative, boring, vanilla plays. Drew Locke today, gunslinger mentality, like, like playing the win the entire game. And if Denver like scored in the red zone, Denver could have put up 30 on these guys today. And it could have been like 30 to 10. I mean, they thoroughly outplayed the Patriots, but the way that they had the wherewithal to win, uh, this is a game that the old Broncos again, would have found a way to choke away. And you're playing Cam Newton, who is a very clutch quarterback. You're playing the greatest coach, maybe in NFL history and Bill Belichick. I think I can clearly say that Bill Belichick is the greatest coach in NFL history I mean right up there with with like a Tom Landry or a um or Walsh in um in San Francisco Bill Walsh so uh, you look at um, you know you know Parcells, but to go out there to New England, play McDaniel's. They're running two Edelman uh, you know reverses against this Denver defense. They were desperate for a play to happen, and, and the team played phenomenal. There was pressure all day um, on on Cam Newton, the D line, and it's not only Bradley Chubb. It's guys that they're getting in free agency. It's low round guys that are coming out there and that, and that are just balling. And Denver played with a sense of urgency. McManus was ice all day. And from the 30-yard line, when you have a kicker like McManus, I mean, they weren't going for first downs. They're going for broke. They're going for touchdowns. That's what Drew Locke was. I mean, I loved how aggressive Drew Locke plays. And if he keeps playing this way, Denver's going to put up so many points. Uh, Denver's going to have great chances to win. They do have Kansas City, but they got to stay the course because with this defense and this quarterback, you, you can have an explosive offense with a defense uh you look at the buffalo bills that's their formula that's why they're so good drew Locke's looking like a star because he's throwing into a huge wind out there in massachusetts and and i love how the guy's staying aggressive i really do you look at Jameis winston he put up a ton of points that defense in tampa wasn't the same last year and drew Locke, i think could take care of the ball better than Jameis winston the mentality of Locke today coming off of that injury I just loved that the I loved the way the kid played today. I really did. It was such an exciting, entertaining product to watch Drew Locke. I mean, he's going one on one and they're going up top and Pat Shermer and Drew Locke putting their balls on the table and saying, F you New England, we're coming right at you all game long. And this is a game, yeah. I was at another NFL game today. Uh, first game that the Eagles had fans. So I went to Ravens, saw Lamar Jackson play a pretty damn good game. So I went back and I was like kind of following the score. And Denver was kind of a team, you know, Drew Locke. I'm a Giants fan. I like Drew Locke. And I was thinking Vic Fangio, this is such a weird team. You know, Vic's finding ways to lose. He's an older guy. Are they going to get a new coach? Did they know Von Miller's out. They're going to New England. I thought this team was dead in the water. I thought the Patriots would just find a way to beat them. And Shermer would be conservative. Instead, Denver played unbelievable. They played to win the entire game. Red zone's a thing that I really believe you can fix. I mean, because this team can move the ball. 
and Philip Lindsay. I mean, if Melvin Gordon is going to be a problem, if he's going to be doing DUI, if he because Philip Lindsay is Colorado, he's Denver. He's he was on the the rookie team, uh, you know, last year. So if if Gordon doesn't fit in, I think that Philip Lindsay can carry the rock. You can even look to trade Melvin Gordon if he doesn't fit in because this culture needs to stay tight in Denver. And maybe you know Gordon seems like a good guy from the outside, but again, um, you, you, they don't need any distractions in Denver right now. And uh, th- this was very, very exciting to see Denver go out there and, and find a way to win. So um, again, props to Locke. I'm going to do a whole film review on this game. It'll be like a lot of the same talks that we're having now, like just just explaining what I see, like they're going up against man and here you go. And I'm not like a football coach or anything like that, but I'll just tell you the style and, and that I like watching the game. And I'll tell you what I see that I like from Drew Locke. Um, I've been doing some film reviews and, and, and you guys, uh, some Denver fans have really liked it over the years of Drew Locke and he's exciting. You guys are one of the best fan bases on YouTube and in the national football league. And now that Denver, now Denver has some serious games that they can play. So big ups to Denver first 10 minutes of the show dedicated to Drew Locke and the Denver Broncos. One second. Let's go to another guy that I like and respect, and that's Jimmy Garoppolo and and the 49ers. Not so fast on going out there and getting rid of Jimmy G. Not so fast. Big time win by the 49ers. Kyle Shanahan, the whole world's against the 49ers. The Dolphins come in and emasculate this team, put up 50 points. That's a beauty of the NFL. It's a beauty of the talent in this league and, and the preparation that each week you can go in it and each team has the talent to really be special. And tonight the 49ers were special from the opening drive, marched right down the field. Then Jimmy G hit, hit George Kittle, kind of a slow second half, but that's fine. Niners get a big time win and Jimmy Garoppolo today, um, you know, manning down the spot and holding it down for the 49ers that are now kind of in the thick of it again. Like Denver, the 49ers are holding on, but the 49ers now have the culture to go with it. And the 49ers, I believe they're now 3-3, three and three, and they're welcoming in the Patriots. And I really want to see the Niners win and, and propel Buffalo to the division title. And I want to see, again, for the Patriots and the Niners, this is going to be an unbelievable game between Shanahan and Bill Belichick, a rematch of the Atlanta Super Bowl. And to see Jimmy G also going up against his former team, the motivation there to see if Jimmy G can get to 4-3 and three and really get the Niners back on track because this team, if they get to the playoffs, even though Seattle looks like they look looks like they're going to win the division, if you get the 49ers in the playoffs as a road team, you start getting some guys healthy on defense again. You got the running game of the 49ers. It could be a team with Jimmy Garoppolo that is truly special in the playoffs. And if he mans the if the 49ers can get through this period and get into the playoffs, it could be a fascinating team to watch from a wild card perspective as Jimmy G tries to get back to a Super Bowl and now win it in Tampa, Florida. It is going to be absolutely fascinating. Let's talk also about, since we're talking Patriots, we're talking Garoppolo, we're talking Niners, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers today were flat out incredible. They're the story of the week. Todd Bowles, a coach who's been fired from the New York Jets. He wasn't a great you know, offensive scout at scouting offense. He had Darnold for a couple of years, had Fitzpatrick, Brandon Marshall. The defense was always kind of decent in New York. It wasn't unbelievable, but Bruce Arians, Jason Light, the guys that they're bringing in, Antoine Winfield from Minnesota, Tyler Johnson, the Rob Gronkowski acquisition. Gronk was back to old Gronk today, Tom Brady, but this defense, unbelievable. They get Jamel Dean, they get a pick six, and they look today, the Buccaneers almost look like the 86 Bears. The Buccaneers defense was absolutely stifling. They would have beat any team in the NFL. They were Super Bowl scary good. They played Aaron Rodgers, an MVP candidate. They played an undefeated Packers team that people, including myself, were talking about
about being one of the best teams in the NFC, and that looked like a repeat of last year's Rodgers game where he went to San Francisco and lost to the NFC champions in a team that was a couple of plays away from hoisting a ring. If Tampa's going to play this style of defense, I mean, Tampa went to Chicago. They brought their defense with them. Tampa went to play Jeff Driscoll in the Denver Broncos. The defense was airtight. Todd Bowles is, is the assistant coach of the year so far. That was the greatest performance on national television. That defense in Dominican Sioux was an absolute monster today. He played like prime Aaron Donald today. He was slinging around Aaron Rodgers. And it just shows you the mentality maybe of Tom Brady. When he comes in, he motivates everybody in that facility. Got Tristan Wirfs playing pretty good. You got Antoine Winfield, Carlton Davis, a second-round pick. I mean... That defense a couple of years ago when they had, I'm trying to think, when they had Dirk Cutter as their head coach with Jameis, that defense was a flat out mess. They had no culture. Bruce Arians comes in and in the two years, they get Tom Brady, they, they, they get Carlton Davis, Levante Davis back to playing Levante Davis style ball. Devin White is everywhere. The defense is fast as shit. Each player is insane. That's a defensive loop of absolute euphoria and if you're I mean Tom Brady made a couple of big time throws but he just had the debt he had the game winning hand with that defense they flustered Aaron Rodgers and they punked Aaron Rodgers straight up punked one of the great quarterbacks of this generation but here's the thing about Aaron Rodgers his team just didn't come to play they laid down uh, you look at LaFleur and Aaron Rodgers, they sometimes go into really hostile, good environments, playing great teams, and their defenses are not the same. I think that Tom Brady, the, the presence of Brady, he elevates everybody in that facility. He gets everybody dialed in. He's strict. He wants the special teams tight, and he knows about that defense. And, and now with Todd Bowles and Bruce Arians, people thought, oh, Tampa's undisciplined. They're a penalized team. Tom Brady misses New England. He misses the structure. I don't think he misses New England so much right now. You're looking at New England. You're looking at no receivers out there, no real tight ends for Cam Newton. He's really struggling. And now you're seeing Brady. You're seeing an upstart team in, in what Bruce Arians is doing in terms of the defense, the young pieces coming together. They are playing. They played today probably the most impressive game out of any team in the National Football League all year. They hope Hosted Aaron Rodgers, who's right up there in the MVP discussion, who's looking like prime Aaron Rodgers this year, and they absolutely just just humiliated and disgraced Aaron Rodgers on national TV. Rodgers did the key and peel celebration. Other than that, but this Tampa defense, I mean, they if they stay healthy, they they right now look like the best team in the NFC with the way that they play today because their potential with the defensive side of the ball, with Gronk going wild, with the Tampa Bay Rays looking like they're going to win a title, with the Tampa Bay Lightning already winning a title, it looks like it could be the year of Tampa. And in a crazy 2020 year, it looks like it, it could be a potential to have Tampa hosting a Super Bowl again. I mean, you look at the, the NFC, you do have uh, Seattle and you do have Russ. Green Bay is still a pretty good record. It's looking like they're going to beat the Saints. And then you have the NFC East. The Panthers lose. You do have Chicago in the north with Green Bay. Chicago's defense playing better. Nick Foles again bringing the magic, kind of like Tom Brady bringing the magic to Chicago. That's another storyline of this week. But the defense of Tampa Bay is the huge storyline. It's not even so much Brady and Rodgers, but Brady made big-time throws when he needed to. Brady elevates everybody in the facility. His his intensity, his attention to detail. Um, he, he, again, is a guy who can't take mediocrity at all. 
He's never taken mediocrity in his whole life. He elevates the entire franchise, kind of like a Russell Wilson. That's what the great ones do. That's what LeBron does in basketball. It's what Michael Jordan did, Magic. You look at the greatest players ever, Lawrence Taylor. The great ones elevate everybody around them in that locker room, in that facility. And it's not a finesse team with Tom Brady whatsoever. With Aaron Rodgers, with Peyton Manning at times, it's a finesse offensive team. But with Tom Brady, it is not. It's stifling defense. And that was a real treat to watch that Tampa Bay defense today do that to Aaron Rodgers. So that that is probably one of the biggest takeaways today. Other big takeaways, you got the NFC East, you got the Eagles battling back. They're still 1-4. and four. And the Eagles are an unbelievably inconsistent team. They were down 24-6. to six. Their offense was absolutely pitiful today. Um, so that certainly is a storyline. And then the New York Giants going out there, getting their first win. So Thursday night, if the Giants come out there motivated, hungry to play, if their line can move the Eagles, if they can get Carson to throw them some interceptions quickly, the Giants are going to have a chance to win against the Eagles. I don't think that high of a chance. The Eagles probably have a 65% chance, and the Giants have a 35% chance of winning. And the Giants, in fact, are a a 6.5-point dog on the road in Philly, and it kind of makes sense too because the Eagles' D-line usually stifles the Giants, um, and if if the Giants can't run the ball, they're going to have trouble. And even Kyle Allen was extending against that defense. The Giants' secondary playing all right football, but the tackling from the linebacker spot is still kind of sketchy, still not that good. And you look at Carson Wentz and Doug Peterson, and they're a much more explosive offense than the Giants. Well, pretty much anybody is. But again, Carson's talented enough. Even if they're down, the Eagles are going to have a great chance to come back. And again, the Eagles have beaten the Giants. They've been to the playoffs. They know how to win close close games a lot better than the Giants do late. Uh, the Giants again today almost gave one away to Washington, to the Washington Redskins or to Washington um, and Kyle Allen uh, going for two. So that'll be fun. I'm going to now take this time to talk about Baker Mayfield. It's very interesting. You know, a couple of guys made some really good points about Mayfield that this year he's trying to be humble. He's not talking that crap. I think Baker Mayfield does do better at times when he plays with a little bit of edge because he's really not having fun playing the game. And Stefanski's a very bland kind of guy. So with, with Freddie, with Lincoln Riley, it's rah rah, it's fun. Um, you got Odell, you got Jarvis. So you got a team that's very emotional. And Baker still is emotional. So you're going to go up and down highs and lows. You got to give credit to the Pittsburgh Steelers defense today. The Steelers defense kind of played like um, the Bucks did today. That's how good the Steelers looked. A big Ben hit Clay pull down the sideline. But really, Baker Mayfield made big errors today, big mistakes, tons of penalties, taking sacks. That Browns offense was just absolutely halted, and it was a humiliating, humiliating loss uh, for the Cleveland Browns. And I think even Cleveland goes to Cincy, where I have to admit that Joe Burrow played absolutely, really phenomenally well today. I mean, there were a lot of slants of Joe Burrow, and I'll give you an objective point of view on Joe Burrow. I said Herbert would be better than Burrow, but Burrow looks like he's adding arm strength. I mean, the way Burrow played today in Indy, even though they lost. So that's going to be interesting because, again, the Bengals, they lose in a humiliating way. The Browns, you know, also the Browns lose. Instead of heartbreaker, the Browns just get absolutely pummeled and punked so that's going to be a really close game probably in in Cincinnati um it's going to be fascinating it wouldn't be a game I'd want to bet on because again Cincinnati who knows how they're going to practice after losing a heartbreaker uh in Indianapolis but for Baker Mayfield again I don't think Case Keenum's the answer uh for the Cleveland Browns uh, I think Mayfield needs to cut it loose, have a little bit more fun. I think that Steelers defense is really, really special. I look at Odell Beckham, and he's not doing much. He'd be a really good guy to trade away so Baker can just take ownership of this entire team. I've, I've said that for a little while now. Browns are 4-2. and two. It's how they bounce back. And there's a chance that Cincy gets them. Cincy's a little bit pesky. 
um, and, and Joe Burrow, and, and they can actually move the ball. And it's going to be a game, again, uh, next week that's very telling. It's telling how they'll respond, but he was flat-out awful today. Cleveland is not at that level where they're a serious playoff contender. They're definitely a wild card. They're definitely third in that division uh, behind the Ravens and the Pittsburgh Steelers. They are definitely still a third. And you look at Baker, you look at the offensive line today got exposed. You know, the Colts' defense today really looked poor. So Baker's gone up. You start to look at the teams he's gone up against Dallas, and you start to look at how easy the schedule was for Cleveland. Um, I still think Mayfield is a very talented, good quarterback. Between the years, again, it's very weird because, you know, he was clearly bothered by the last offseason. Um, and then the Steelers' defense, again, impeccably good. So Cleveland, again, even if Cleveland can get to a playoff with Baker Mayfield, he can continue to advance the franchise. Not every single week is going to be absolutely perfect. And you can't allow one game to define you and go on to the next week in, in Cincinnati and also get punked. But Baker Mayfield today um, was really, really poor. And the doubters are going to start talking about Baker Mayfield now. And I still think you can win games with this guy at the quarterback position. I still think he has a big arm, a lot of talent. Um, and, and again, I think he's still going to start and be a really good quarterback in this league for a long time. But uh, today, the Steelers absolutely were motivated. Uh, the Steelers, they beat the Eagles. They kind of got rolling. Um, they looked up, and they were a great record. But they put it all together against their rival. A phenomenal, phenomenal game by the Pittsburgh Steelers. It really was about how great that Steelers defense can be with Watt, with Minka Fitzpatrick, uh, with the guys on that defense. It really was kind of about the Pittsburgh Steelers and Mike Tomlin just taking it to Kevin Stefanski. So, I mean, it's a long year. And there's teams that peak early that at the end of the year don't make it out alive. And it, it, without looking at Cleveland's schedule, it could be 8-8, eight and eight, it could be 9-7. and seven. Um, and, and again, I know a lot of Browns fans, you look at Baker stats, you see 150 passing yards. I think he played great against the Colts, against the Dallas Cowboys. I think he's functioning well. He's finding success. And this week's going to be a rough week of criticism, but every single week in the NFL, you get a chance to redeem yourself, and he's going to have a really good opportunity um, against a rookie and a team that's very depressed in Cincinnati, uh, a team that blew a 21-point lead, and a team where Phillip Rivers absolutely lit them up. And that was a game of Phillip Rivers. That was, that was an essential Philip Rivers game uh, where Philip Rivers w was actually very, very good, still showed off a lot of arm strength, kept the doubters away from him, and the Colts are 4-2 and two, headed to a bye as well. So that was a humongous win by the Colts. Uh, Tannehill deserves a lot of credit. I got to go back and watch the brilliance of Ryan Tannehill, but that's certainly a game uh, that I'll go back and watch. Uh, for Tennessee to pull that one out, I know Tennessee's defense is very good. The Titans just beat the Bills. They were on an emotional high. Houston went with the new coach and beat Jacksonville. Had a very good week of practice. Tennessee was resting on their laurels after after an unbelievable game against Buffalo. They took this game very lightly, and they came out and Houston that you know Tennessee slept walk and Houston had a chance to beat them but again Tannehill didn't let them that's a mark of a really good team the ability to bounce back and find a way to win when you're not playing your best because next game Tennessee is now going to go back to the drawing board and now they're going to correct those defensive mistakes and become an elite defense which they can be and they're not going to let this game define them, I don't think. So Tennessee, if they get home field or any advantage, that defense at home is going to play great. I'm not worried about that defense. It's a one-game scenario with a Deshaun Watson with a talented quarterback. And, and, that's, and that's how it works. So um, listen, I appreciate you guys um, giving me uh, the views. Um, giving me views on this episode. It's a half an hour. It recaps everything in the NFL. Um, and again, we kind of go all over the map. I'm gonna. I focused a lot on Denver to open up the show. 
uh, kicked it to San Francisco and Jimmy Garoppolo and a really big time win. We also spoke about Tampa Bay. Those are the real big storylines. Baker uh, and, and Cleveland, you know, you still got to hold on if you're Baker Mayfield. You're four and two right now. You got to relax a little bit, get back to the drawing board. It's not going to be perfect every single week. Um, fans and everybody's going to get so emotional over the way that they have lost the games in their division, the Baltimore and to the Pittsburgh Steelers. But hey, it's going to be fun. And guys, I really appreciate you uh, listening to the show. Going to cut up the show, but right now uh, I'm going to post this whole episode. This is late on a Sunday night, early Monday morning talking about week six, the recap, the Bucks, everything involved with this week. All righty, guys. Thank you all for watching.